was a reminder for myself and abdukul ajisa da'if wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahal <coughs> by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that the eleventh month of Zul Qidah opened and the beatific tajallis that Allah granted for us to have a life in which to be dressed by these realities to see and to witness the opening of this holy month and that a reminder from the heart of Allah about the reality of the leaven, the reality of La ilaha illallah reflecting into the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah What we covered last night very, very deep. <laughs> it's a very, very deep. So, inshaAllah we go into any questions and answers from our discussions last night and see if people had any concerns and understandings from the number where we started from 92 and you write like a circle put 92 inside that circle is the reality of 29 and then you put 29 at the top and inside that circle is 11. And that becomes the secret of that reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah and the reality of Lam Alif and why tariqahs are symbolic of Lam Alif. And the symbolism of Lam Alif is that the Lam comes behind the Alif because La no partner. Allah allows the reality of the lamb to attach from behind but Allah I'm a hidden treasure. I wanting to be known, not that I will be known. So as a result of I wanting to be known the lamb goes in front and the alif remains always a hidden treasure. Because of that non tariqa are very confused. non tariqa people they have no idea what you're talking about. They don't see the importance of the lamb and they think their whole life is to focus on the alif. And this understanding of Lam Alif is our entire secret of haqqaiqs. As much as you pursue the Alif, as much as you pursue Allah trying to get to know Allah without the order, without the Haqqaiq without the muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah moves, doesn't allow you to understand it. So as a result they keep trying to move to that reality that I only want to know about Allah I only want to hear about Allah and they never reach to any reality and they teach always very superficial because they're not able to reach. They go for hajj, they spend their time in Mecca and they barely visit Medina and they left. Ninety-nine point nine percent of people because this will be your collective body of religion like a lab, say, how do we collectively know what Muslims believe? Do you speak on their behalf? No, Safa, nobody speaks on their behalf. But you can witness the collective whole on Hajj or even their plan to go for Umrah. The collective mindset is we go spend 15 days in Mecca and barely the Hajj package wants one day, two days Medina get out because they're always after the Alif. They paid no attention to the lamb. They think it's this, 
But Rabbi Allah said, I'm a hidden treasure, wanting to be known. So it can't be that simple that this alif is hidden somewhere. So when we understand Basirat al Jalala there's always this flipping happening. So Allah call creation to oneness. That's represented by the Kaaba. Come to Ahad, come to oneness. Leave multiple gods, leave all your desires, leave all your characteristics, come to the ocean of oneness. And that's the symbolism of the Holy Kaaba is that you take off all your identity, you put your white fabric and you begin to make tawaf. The tawaf is the crushing, it's the people coming from many entering into the ocean of oneness and they're moving like one ocean of white. That was only to come to tawheed. But that was not Maqam al Mahmud, that was not the realities that Allah wanted for the nation. This was the 99%. And when we talk, you can't talk, otherwise, you can't come. You can't have your own discussions back there, we have to have them here. So, the reality of Mecca is the reality of that oneness that to make people to come to oneness, but you didn't get the treasure. You came to the understanding, leave the many and come to the one. It's haqqaiq then begins to teach that that servant of one, I'm not on heavens and I'm not on the earth but I'm on the heart of my servant. The one whom represents the oneness of Mecca, the servant of Mecca. The one whom understood the tawaf, taught the tawaf, brought the holy Qur'an is the hidden treasure of Allah So when you go to Mecca you're acknowledging the oneness of Allah You're coming from the multiplicity into oneness and singularity. But when Allah accepts your sincerity and your tawafs are accepted, your du'as and your prayers are accepted, Allah begin to inspire within your heart, I'm not here, I'm on the heart of my believer. Did you find his believer yet? Means then these are the Ahbab and Nabi When they understood they came to oneness, they came to the disciplines of Islam and Allah opened within their heart, I am in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad If you want to find me go to Medina. And when you enter into the holy precincts of Medina to Munawara it's the city of light because Allah's Divinely Presence on the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad in Rosh Sharif. Allah is not in the Kaaba, the Kaaba is what you built with your hands. That has a different reality of what's there. But Allah's Divinely Presence is where? On the heart of His servant. His servant is holier than the stones, his servant is holier than the house, the ancient house but this is an ancient soul. This is a soul in which is manzil al-Qur'an, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So means they don't get it so they keep missing it, they keep separating the two and they go for what they want but the haqqaiq is the deciphering and a salik. The seeker it never comes open like that. The seeker is one whom seeks and seeks 
and through their seeking they sit with the scholars of realities and they begin to be dressed by its understandings. And they say, oh, now I understand what that hadith means. That when Allah is giving this isharat is that, find my believer, find the one whom I called my Habib in which I love and all creation is trying to get my love but I have attached my love to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And that becomes the reality of the eleven, the reality of the Divinely Mirror. That when we're running towards the love of Allah it's Allah that inspire us, وَلِنِ كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Direct yourself to Medina and if you do it correctly and you do it with respect and you do it with ihtiram that's why all these nat sharif is about, I'm going to Medina, I'm standing at the qabr, I'm doing with all my respect, I did all my mawlid, I kept my salawat. I did all of this ihtiram so that Allah would accept my entry into Medina to Munawwara, into His Divinely Presence. This is the greatness and this is why we said that tariqah is the reality of tawheed. They got tawheed completely wrong. The reality of tawheed, the real La ilaha illallah is in the heart of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that's the great reward of the turuqs. The path is the path to Allah path to the Lord of power which la hawla wa la quwwata illa, illa billah. You can't connect and grab power from Allah because you're saying, La ilaha illallah can give you power because He didn't put your name on the kalimah. But la hawla wa la quwwa means there's no help that can come to you and there's no power that can come to you. But through where? It has to come from the reality of La ilaha illallah that emanating from Muhammadun Rasulullah So what the Nat Sharif said, when I heard, in ladheena yubayyunuka yubayyoon Allah, the Yad Allah, as soon as I heard Allah put His hand on the hand, I understood the reality. What's the Nat, the nat says? Hati. The hand I heard, I mean it triggered the reality for that wali, that Allah giving these isharats, you want my hand? Take the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad Where are you going to take the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad in Mecca or Medina? In Medina. So as soon as you come with adab into Medina and your life is always Medina. We're not a people who go once and then we do every forbidden thing years and ten years until we go to Medina again. Our life is that we entered Medina and we're never going to leave Medina. And if you haven't entered Medina by watching these videos, watching these teachings, you're becoming and making a Medina in your home. When you have the salawats, have the nasheeds, have all of these realities that are being taught we said last night, you carry the dome of Medina to Munawwara on your head with the ihtiram. It's the highest honour that Allah gave to us so that your whole character was, Ya Rabbi accept my entry into Medina to Munawwara, that accept me into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that every difficulty to go away. Why all these Nat Sharif are talking about mushkil gusha? That every difficulty go to it. Why? Because you reach the hawla. Hawla is help. All their life they look for help. Anywhere you go for help, how are you going to reach to help if you're not with the one whom Allah His hand is on His hand. And Allah is going to ask you, why should I put my hand on your hand? 
He went only to Kaaba. He said, I'm coming here for hawla. Allah said, I don't think I said in Qur'an that my hand is on your hand. My hand is on the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And that Prophet hand has to be upon your hand. At that time Allah Ya Allah is moving onto your hand because Allah wants everything in tawheed. Nothing in our deen is based on La ilaha illallah. You can never cut out Muhammadun Rasulullah Qudra if it want to come to you, how it could ever come without Muhammadun Rasulullah You took the imam of your life, moved it aside and Allah going to send you something. It's just the horrible adab to even think like that. And that's why it's the reality of tawheed. Such a reality that those who think they're ahl tawheed they actually have no understanding of tawheed. Because they took out the biggest part of that tawheed, what separates us from every other understanding and belief is La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah And as a result that is Allah's hawla, every help comes onto that hand because the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad is there to resolve it. Because you're holding the hand of your imam and your imam is supported by Allah that's all you need. Every difficulty will be resolved, every quwwa and power, this is the power source. The one whom his heart is emanating Holy Qur'an is the power of Allah because yet we don't understand what Qur'an is, Allah if the book that can revive the dead it's here. So, oh, oh so now means what? Let's translate like science class, the Qur'an in heart of Prophet Qur'an can revive the dead, so means the heart of Prophet can revive the dead, muhil qulub. From, because Qur'an is emanating from his heart Everything in this creation is governed by the holy speech of Allah The holy Qur'an again meaning what? The heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So then we begin to understand ahawla and quwwah that every help we reach to the hand. That's why nasheeds and salawats and all this good character, good adab, the immensity of this love so that we grab the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad And that was the reality of the bayat. The bayat were the ulul am that represented for you the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Their life is to teach you about that reality. In our lives we have to find the moons, the qamar, qamarun, the moons of the nation of this reality and their only focus is the sun. They should be focusing on nothing else and they should only be talking about the sun because the moon doesn't talk about Pluto, it doesn't talk about Jupiter, it doesn't talk about Saturn, it talks about the sun. Why? Because the sun is the light, it is the sources of light, the reflections of light, all the realities of light are coming out. And that is the Muhammadan haqqaiq and Muhammadan realities. So as a life is to follow the Muhammadan haqqaiqs and realities and take a path like the moon in which it is continuously bombarded and bombarded with difficulty. The moon is not something that is a beautific and shiny but it's something that has been intensely tested and as a result its surface is all filled with craters and difficulties and testings. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensities of the reality of leaven, the immensity and the reality of Zul Qida. And this holy month and its tajalli, Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
Bu hürmeti Muhammed el-Mustafa ve bisir-i Suret el-Fatiha.